All right, so on to the um, multicolors. We start with ugh, blood water entity. One blue red for a 2-2 two -two elemental at uncommon. So it's got flying and prowess. So a 2-2 two -two flyer for three is fine. Uh, even in, in two colors, it still seems okay to me. Mm -hmm. And then, when Bloodwater Entity enters the battlefield, you may put target instant or sorcery from your graveyard on top of your library. Hmm. So if you've burned a removal spell, let's say a, um, uh, what is it, Magma Spray mm -hmm. on turn one, that seems real good. Mm -hmm. One one or two, whatever. Um, I, I feel like... This is not going to be a first pick, but if I'm in these colors, I'm absolutely going to pick it up. That's exactly how I feel. If I'm in red, blue, then I want him. But yeah. otherwise, I'm not going to grab him and build around him. No, I don't think so. I mean, he does have prowess, yeah. which is neat, but I need a little more to want to go blue, red directly. And I also need to wait till we get to the um, non-creature spells before I see how strong I think blue, red with a heavy spell component is going to be, so... Mm -hmm. But it seems okay. Next, we have Obelisk Spider. Ooh. One black-green for an uncommon spider. It's a 1-4 with reach. All spiders have reach, of course. Uh, so it's a little smaller than a giant spider, in that it's not as, as strong, but uh, it's also one less mana than that. Mm -hmm. And when Obelisk Spider deals combat damage to a player... Or, sorry, to a creature, put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature. So it withers creatures. That's sweet. They didn't just uh, want to call it wither in case you pump its uh, power, I guess. Yeah. Or they didn't want to introduce wither as the mechanic just for one card. No. And whenever you put one or more minus one, minus one counters on a creature, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Oh boy. So, it's a little greedy to think that you can cast black-green on turn three and then white-white on turn five for the horse, right? Yes, it's very greedy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this still seems great to me. Yeah, um, yeah. In fact, I would go so far as to say I would first pick this um, because green-black is a color combination that I kind of like, and this seems powerful enough to me that I'd want to work around it. Yeah, we've already seen there's some really sweet stuff in both colors and it's a very strong archetype in Amonkhet as well so you know you're going to probably pick up a little bit of support for it in the last pack. I don't think it's a bomb. I don't think it's something that I'm absolutely going to pick every time. No. But I would I would consider first picking this. Yeah, he's, it's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to deal with creatures. Which... What do you think? Yeah, um, I probably wouldn't first pick it necessarily, no? but oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think it depends on a lot of things, like what else is in the pack, who's sitting next to me, because we <laughs> play at a store where yeah, that's fair. you can kind of guess-ish what, what the likelihood of you playing that go. those color combinations are, but uh, I think it's really good. All right. Resolute Survivors. One red, white for a human warrior at Uncommon or human warriors, <laughs> uncommon. They're three threes. So three three for three. Seems good. You may exert resolute warriors as it attacks. Sure. Whenever you exert a creature, that's any creature again, resolute survivors... Um, did I see resolute warriors before? Yep. Okay. Resolute survivors deal one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. So this is the life gain spell I want to play with the... Um, with the horse, right? Yeah. Yeah. This card, um, I think I might first pick it and do a build around. Re because red, white, yep. we already know red's aggressive. And you <clears throat> could certainly build around this and it could become brutal. Yep. Yeah, I might first pick this. Um, I'm. It's weird. I'm less likely to first pick this than the green, black... 
uh, I spider. I think it points to our um, play styles. Because I, think, I love the aggressive, get all the damage and I can. I think first picking this card is more often going to be correct than first picking the green black spider. So maybe I'm just wrong <laughs> about <laughs> my card evaluation. But uh, no, it seems very good. So you'd want to first pick that? Yeah. Did you read the the flavor text? Uh, yes, yes. We are crops no longer. Reap elsewhere. Ooh. Yeah, Bolus is getting some crack back, that's for sure. Yup. <laughs> River Hoopoo. It's so cute. Hoopoo. Is a green blue for a 1 3 bird at Uncommon. Mm hmm. It's a flyer because it's a bird and birds fly. And for two, green blue, you gain two life and draw a card. How cute. I love it. Uh, I wouldn't first pick it. I wouldn't pick it highly. But if I was uh, in... You know what? If I was in green, I would pick this. Mm -hmm. Because there's enough um, capability in green to splash that I would just take this. Mm -hmm. Do you think this points to the idea that maybe Simic is a supported deck? I don't know, because there were some things that made Simic look great in uh, Amonkhet, and then it just wasn't. Yeah. If the format slows down a little bit, then yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm, I will probably pass it most times. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. It's cute, though. Unraveling Mummy. One, white-black for a creature zombie at Uncommon. It is a 2-3 three for 3. You can pay 1 in a white. Target attacking zombie gains lifelink until end of turn. And you can pay 1 in a black. Target attacking zombie gets death touch until end of turn. I suddenly see more of a reason to put that 0-5 zombie wall in my deck. Really? Why? Oh, it's attacking. Dang it! Dang it! It should say attacking or blocking, because that would make it amazing. Also, an 0-5 doesn't do damage. Oh, fair enough. Dang it! <laughs> <sighs> I just want it to be good. It's a zombie wall! Yeah. Mm. That said, I think I would first pick this card, because there is so much zombie stuff out there. Yeah, you'd just go all in zombies? I would grab it and not be tied to it, but... There's a lot of zombies running around in yeah. red, white, and black. So, you know. And, yeah, red, white, and black. Mm -hmm. I don't think there were any blue zombies. No, don't I don't think, think so. so. Well, I mean, there's Eternal Eyes cards, right? Yeah. But, yeah, um, this is strong. I would not pick it up. Uh, I would not take it first, personally, but I would pick it up if I were in either of those colors. Yes. And please remember that when I say I would first pick this, it means I would first pick it and not feel bad if there weren't a bonkers um, rare or mythic in the pack because sure. we've seen some ridiculous ones. I just think this is a perfectly acceptable and strong first pick. Okay. 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 <laughs> We're on to the mythics, eh? Yep. The Locust God. Four. Blue-red for a legendary creature god at mythic. It's a 4-4 four, four for 6 with flying. Those aren't good, right? Huh. <laughs> Whenever you draw a card, create a 1-1 one, one blue and red insect creature token with flying and haste. Oh boy. So every single turn, at least, you can pay 2 blue-red to draw a card, then discard a card. So loot for 4. And create an insect. Mm -hmm. Again, with haste. Um, you can do that to chump in uh, combat with it. You sure. can do it to uh, affect combat math. You can do it to just loot, because looting is awesome. And then it also has the ability that all three of these guys, well, there's going to be three of them, spoilers, um, when the Locust God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end of step. And you know, I gotta say, I prefer that to indestructible, but you have to um, do a certain thing or reach a certain thing for it to become live. Mm -hmm. I'd rather it bounce to my hand and have to replay it, 
then I have to empty my hand before it can attack or whatever. This guy is pretty sweet. So it's funny. They're not gods in the traditional magic sense now that we have a traditional magic sense. Mm -hmm. Because they're not, you know, they they don't uh, buff their tribe or... um, they're not indestructible. They don't have a thing that causes them not to be able to attack. But they're godlike in that they're indestructible ish. They're persistent. And that's of course, for sure. they have um, creature type god. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I would first pick this. Oh, Build every around. single Absolutely. time. The gods are bonkers. They're just so good. Can we move to the next one? Yep. Keep them coming. The Scarab God. Ooh. Three. Blue, black. So one mana cheaper. For a 5-5 five, five legendary creature god at Mythic. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and you scry X, where X is the oh. number of zombies you control. Oh. And then to facilitate that, you can pay two blue, black to exile target creature card from a graveyard and create a token that's a copy of it Except that it's also a 4-4 four, four black zombie. That is even better than Eternalize. Because it's only 4 any time. Well, yeah, and you can Eternalize anything. So even if you have an Eternalized creature, you, you can, can pay it. 4 instead of its whatever its cost is. Oh, this guy is insane. And then you scry X and your opponent loses X oh. every turn. Plus, he does the thing where he goes back to your hand if somebody kills him. Yep. First pick. Oh, God. Every time. And I squeal a little bit every time I get him. All right. Next up, we have the Scorpion God. Three black red for a legendary creature god. This one's a 6-5. Boy. And whenever a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, you draw a card. Okay. Then you can pay one black red to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Wow. Just shrink the opposition right down. Yep. Um, yeah, not much more to say. First pick, absolutely play. Mm -hmm. I love it. I think it's real sweet. Um, Mm -hmm. I would just be in one of those colors and pick any of these gods. Yep. So, yeah, absolutely. Oh, and that's the end of our multicolor, uh cards so we've just got a couple more artifacts to go through Mm -hmm. first up we have graven abomination it's a three mana three one yeah it's a horror i love this guy i think he's super sweet because we haven't talked about what he does whenever graven abomination attacks exile target card from defending players graveyard Mm -hmm. um that's going to be relevant again some of the time Probably not when this guy is dying in combat, so I don't really think the ability matters that much. I don't think this is a high pick. It's a 3-1. It's going to die to anything. Um, I still think it's good. Um, You attack, even if he dies, you get to remove one of their creatures. It's removal a lot of the time. You're assuming that some that they're always going to have an eternalized card. No, that you I'm care not about. assuming that they're always, but I'm saying there's a good percentage of the time. Hmm. I think he's neat. I think he's neat, absolutely. I just don't think it's a high pick. I think <laughs> oftentimes I'm not going to play it. I would side it in. I was just going to say, I think he's probably living in my sideboard, living but in your sideboard? I think okay. he's pretty neat. And... So I'm going to go 23rd, 24th. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Next we have Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. This is an 0-4 for 2. Defender Wall. It's a common. You can tap it, uh, and Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs deals 1 damage to target player. Activate this ability only if you control a desert or there is a desert card in your graveyard. Sure. Um, so it's a pinger, sort of. Eh. Yeah, pretty much. 23rd, 24th. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Hollow One. This is the rare. Uh, five mana for a 4 4. Golem. But Hollow One costs two less 
uh, to cast for each card you've cycled or discarded this turn. And you can cycle him for two. So you could potentially play this for free if you've cycled three things. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know about this guy. I think he's a 23rd card if I have a lot of cycling stuff in there. I think and I he's need better a five drop. than that if um, you're in a cycling deck. Like, cycling something and then playing this for three seems yeah, good. Yeah, seems okay. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm not going to pick him up early. No. But if I'm in the cycling deck, I will, I will pick him up when I see him. Mm -hmm. If the cycling deck is a real deck. Yeah, that's the problem, right? Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, so, the artifacts aren't terribly exciting. No, I mean, this one is interesting for other formats, maybe. Yeah, I, and I think a lot of them are interesting. Like, I like the 3 one. I think he's really cool. Mm -hmm. So, that's our set review for the creatures of Hour of Devastation. What did you think overall? I'm excited. There's some really cool stuff. There's a, It's going to make me want to draft it a lot, because there are a ton of rares and mythic rares that you want to see. That I want to that see you want and to play with. Yeah. Darn you wizards. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But even the commons and the uncommons I think are fairly strong. I think it's going to be interesting. And Amonkhet is still, you know, there. So, mm -hmm. and I'm not done with it. Like, sure, I was done with the draft format, but I still love most of the cards. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be very excited to see them in their new context. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoyed this set review, please share it share it around we know that there are plenty of good set reviews out there but we think that our model gives the most information in the most relatable terms mm -hmm. uh and think about liking it uh subscribing to our channel also if you've listened to this in audio form uh please give it the old uh five star ratings on itunes where you can find this uh with uh, we're gonna put it up with the knowledge pool right mm-hmm so, and please think about sharing that podcast to the Knowledge Pool. If you're watching this on YouTube and don't know what the Knowledge Pool is, well, check it out. Links are in the description down below. Also, you can find our breakdown on more exciting um, snippets of Hour of Devastation on the blog. You'll be able to find unboxings, uh, draft articles, all sorts of nifty things there. So consider checking that out. But in the meantime, thanks very much for sitting with us and listening to us yammer. And come back tomorrow when we'll be putting all of these creatures in context when we talk about the removal, combat tricks, and general non-creature spells of Hour of Devastation. Mm -hmm. So thanks for watching.